The Tarek 9mm handgun, what we're going to talk about today. This particular one is based, there are two versions. There was the Tarek, the larger version, the 9mm version, which was based on the Beretta 1951. And then there is another version, the Mod 70, which is in a smaller caliber and is based on the Beretta Mod 70, obviously. Um, very hard to distinguish them. Some, it's sometimes hard to distinguish them in photographs if you're just seeing the slide. Uh, some interesting facts about the Tarek is you have on the right side, you have Tarek 9mm made in Iraq, and then on the on the left side, you have the exact same thing but written in Arabic, particularly Tarek, uh, Tarek Ari 9mm Sana uh, Yani Al Iraq. And what that is, you see this a lot on other Iraqi guns as well on the Tabuks. You see the left side is in Arabic, the right side is in English. So, who the Tarek is named after is actually an 8th century general who was actually known for taking over Spain, for leading the invasion into Spain, which would later become Muslim controlled Spain. Um, the name actually goes back to Gibraltar as well, and Gibraltar is a similar word in English for the word Tarek. The Tarek entered service with Saddam Hussein's armies in, I think, the 1980s. Uh, we have examples going back to the early 1990s from the Desert Storm. Not many of them have really been imported into the United States because there really hasn't been any importation laws or any importation um, programs to actually get them over to the United States. The majority, in fact, all of the ones in the United States came over via, you know, guys taking them back in their sea bags or somehow getting them back legally via different units. Today, Tarek sell one sold at Rock Island I was just looking at for about $1,600. There's another one that was gold plated that sold for about 20000 or so. So that's a bit of interesting history there on the sale. Very small market for these in the States. So it wasn't only Iraq that produced copies of Beretta handguns in the Middle East. The Egyptians did as well with the Halwan, which is a similar copy of the Beretta M1951. So another interesting fact, there's a figurine on the grips on the right side and the left side. You'll see different colors of this figurine, some in a more bronze color, some in a silver color. Um, but both these figurines, that's the guy that the pistol is named after. His full name is Tariq Ibn, Tariq Ibn Zayed, um, the same Muslim commander from the 700s uh, who went into Spain. Today on the Iraqi market, the Tariqs aren't exactly the most coveted handguns. Um, they definitely rank below stuff like Glocks and HS product pieces that sort of leaked their way out of Iraqi government and military service. Tariqs are sort of, you know, the throwaway pieces that you can find. They're really cheap. They're your, they're your sort of high points of the Iraqi handgun market. There's just so many of them and the quality is so low. In fact, a lot of people actually buy Tariqs and they actually use them to improvise with. So you'll see Tariqs with suppressors, with different uh, threaded muzzles, and they'll use suppressors on the end of it. And you'll see that every now and again. Terrorist organizations use those in assassinations. The various Tariqs that we've observed at the Smithsonian Gun Room in Washington DC and at the USMC Museum in Virginia is that they have a lot of Beretta parts. So they'll have, uh, the barrels especially, will have Beretta proof marks and they'll have Beretta assembly marks that are on there but the rest of the pistol will have, will have been made in Iraq. We see the same thing with the Tabuks and that we see apparently in, in the initial part of the book production you had a lot of Yugoslav parts that came over into Saddam's Iraq and this is the magazines and stuff like that. That is indicative of certain parts were still made in the, in the original country in Yugoslavia or in, um, in Yugoslavia or in Italy which would be the pressure bearing components such as the barrel which would be the hardest to make parts whereas the rest of it, the slide, uh, the pistol grips, the little figurines and stuff like that, all that was made in Iraq as well. Alright, thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate the viewership. Hope to see you next time on TFB TV and like to give a big shout out to Venturi Munitions for helping support this episode. Thank you.